All righty, the book of John chapter 20, I'm going to read, I'm going to read over in Matthew chapter 6, a couple of verses of scripture, and I worked on this last night in motel, and I hope it'll help us. Matthew chapter number 6 and uh, verses number 5, uh, it says, And when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues, the corners of the streets, that they may be seen of men. Verily I said unto you, they have their reward. In verse 6, But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet. And when thou hast shut thy door, pray to thy Father which is in secret, and thy Father which is in secret shall reward thee openly. But when you pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. And then over in John chapter number 20, if you'll notice in, in Matthew, he talks about when thou prayest, enter into thy closet. And that word closet there does not necessarily mean a place where you hang clothes or keep all your junk in. <laughs> but it just simply means a, a special place or a secret place or a uh, secure place that you can find. So when you pray, find that secret place. Find that a uh, place where you can kind of lock yourself up and be alone. And then in John chapter number 20, and uh, uh, verses number, uh, well, let's just pick up reading verse number 19. <clears throat> it said, The same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled, assembled for the fear of the Jews, came Jesus and stood in the midst and said unto them, Peace be unto you. And when he had so said, he showed unto them his hands and his side. Then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. Then said Jesus again, Peace be unto you, <coughs> and from my Father, as my Father hath sent me, even so send I you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them, and said unto them, Receive you the Holy Ghost. Amen. Whosoever sins you remit, they are remitted unto them, and whosoever sins you retain, they are retained. And uh, verse 24, But Thomas, one of the twelve, called Didymus, was not with them when Jesus came. The other disciples therefore said unto him, We have seen the Lord. He said unto them, Except I see in his hands the prints of the nails, put my fingers in the prints of the nails, and thrust my hand into his side, I will not believe. After eight days his disciples were within, and Thomas with them, then came Jesus. The door being shut, and stood in the midst of them, and said, Peace be unto you. Then said he to Thomas, Reach hither thy finger, and behold thine hands, and reach hither uh, thy hand, and thrust into my side, and be not faithless, but believing. Thomas answered and said unto him, My Lord and my God. And Jesus said unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have seen me, and yet believe not. If you notice in these verses in uh, Matthew 6, it talks about entering into the closet when you pray. I think about mother, when I read that verse, my mother took that literally. That was her place. She would go to her closet and get in her closet, and that's where she prayed. And uh, we'd say something to her, and she'd say, well, that's what the Bible says, enter into your closet. And uh, so she took that literally. And many times, you've heard me tell it, come home from school, and couldn't find mother, and we'd go to the closet and listen, and mother would be in the closet praying, and God would uh, move, and God bless. Sometimes she'd come out of the closet shouting, head to the kitchen, starting supper. Sometimes, Brother Christian, we'd go back there and lean and see if mother's back there, and you'd hear her call your name. Boy, you didn't hang around long in, you moved on out, amen. But my mother took that literal, and that was her place. That was her place. That was her place where she just got away from everything and shut the doors of the closet and got in there, and it was just her and the Lord. Uh, for many years, I, I traveled in a van, and that was my place. I had a customized van, and, and I would find me a place, and I would go out, and the kids was with us, or Kay, and sometimes other preachers traveled with us, and I'd go out in that van and sit and had my Bible and stuff, and that was my place. I'd pray and meet with God and sometimes I wished I'd just parked that van when I got when it broke down and just left it sitting out there for the memories I had of the times that the Lord came down and blessed me and helped me in that secret place and uh, and here in these verses of scripture it talks about the, the disciples was being shut up 
they were shut up in there uh, for different reasons and they came out with a different reason but I want to preach this morning on the value the value of behind the doors with Jesus the value of just being the behind the door with Jesus sometimes everything's going and we're running everywhere in every direction trying to find help trying to find peace and you know where it's at? It's right there in that secret place that we have with God sometimes that we mention. If you don't have a secret place, you ought to get you one. Amen? You ought to find you a place that just you and God meet sometimes. Uh, me and Kate, we've got a place over at the house. we got a place at the lake. And, and we go down there and pull our car down through there and park at the lake and, and uh, take us a cup of coffee. And we just sit there and talk. And that's our place. Uh, we'll go and talk we don't play with the phones and we don't do anything we just talk to each other watch people walk up and down through there and just that's our little place that we go to and get out of the house pull away and that's just our little place that we go and uh, sometimes people say well uh, what what do you do that for and I said well I'm 73 year old and do what I want to amen but but uh, we go over there that's our that's a place that we have set aside that we just go over there and just spend time together. Young folks look at you like that's a waste of time, you know. They got to be doing everything in the world, you know. But you know what? That's just our time. We shut ourselves away, pull in there. And I'm going to tell you, as a Christian, you ought to have a place that you and God just meet together along. Amen. And I thought about several times in the Bible, several times in the Bible, uh, the word shut the door is mentioned several times in, in the Bible. I'll give them to him right quick. I don't want to get stuck on them. But in Genesis chapter 19, you remember when uh, Lot came out and uh, was talking to those guys that had came and, and he offered them his daughter and they was going to come upon Lot. And the Bible said the angel reached out and pulled him in and shut the door. That's a place of safety. Aren't you glad, boy, when you get in that place, it's just you and God. It's just a place of safety that God uh, pulls you in and you have him there to protect you. Amen. Uh, it's kind of like my granddaughter, uh, uh, Alexi. She, if a storm comes, uh, she, she wants her not. If she's at the house, had a storm one time, not uh, been a while back, and she was at the house and, and uh, she slept in that other bedroom. Most times she wants to sleep with Nana, and I end up in the other place. But that night she took the other bed, and in the middle of the night, uh, uh, Brother Christian, well, there's a lightning. I mean, it hit a lightning and thundered, and I come up out of the bed. I thought she's going to be scared, and I couldn't even get out of bed. She's coming down the hall, hollering, Papa, you go on yonder, I'm coming in here. And she jumped in the bed with Nana. Nana couldn't help her a bed. But it's just that place that she had right there with Nana. Now she's got her own place. If storm comes, you know what she does? She calls Kay and talks to her till the storm passes by. Kay's, to, Kay's to 10 mile away, but she feels safe in her voice, in her words. And boy, I tell you, when you get in that secret place with God, boy, you can feel some safety and peace in your heart. Then I thought about in the book of Leviticus, uh, if you'll remember chapter 13, they have uh, the story of the lepers. And a person that has leprosy. And you know what? They come before the high priest and they look them over. And if certain things are a certain way, then they shut them up. And they put them up and shut the door uh, for seven days. And they search them and look at them. And they see if it's going to change anything. And after seven days, they come back out. And if they still got it, they put them up another seven days. And come pronounce them unclean. But if it's okay when they come out, then they turn them back loose. And I thought about, my friend, that, that shut door there is a place of searching when they get in there they're searching themselves they're looking at themselves boy ain't it good when you get in that secret place there ain't nobody else there to blame <laughs> there ain't nobody else to point to it's just you and God and you can lay before God and let God through the person of the Holy Ghost and through his word search it and you can search your own heart and see where you are with God amen, amen. you can't blame it on nobody else amen if you're just there hey, you, can't, you can't point nobody else's finger then I thought about in the book of 2 Kings uh, that little widow woman that there that's going to come get her sons and you remember uh, Elisha came and talked to her and said what have you got and she said well I just got this little oil in this lamp and he said that's enough go gather all the vessels you can find and they went and got uh, all the vessels she could find and the Bible said when there was no more vessel the Bible said they shut the door 
They shut the door, and my friend, she began to pour that oil out, and every vessel that they brought was filled, and some left over. That's a place of supply. Boy, I tell you, in that shut door, she found what she needed. She found her supply. Boy, aren't you glad when you get in that secret place sometime? Boy, that's the word. You can get supplies from God. You can get what you need to go a little farther. You can get what you need sometime. I'll tell you what, you may have had done this, and I've had to do this before. Get in that secret place, my friend, when your groceries is down. Amen. When the bills is due and you ain't got no money to pay them, boy, you can get in that secret place sometime and holler help and trust the Lord. And guess what? God comes through and helps us and supplies the needs that we have in our life. Then I thought about in 2 Kings chapter 4, you remember the Shulamite woman. The Shulamite woman, the Bible said that uh, God gave her a son and he got sick. And the Bible said she took him up in that little chamber, laid him down on the bed, and she shut the door. And the Bible said she headed for the man of God. When the man of God comes, she said, he said, is it well with you? Is it well with your son? She said, it's well. And my friend, she poured her petition out before the Lord. And guess what? God, my friend, resurrected that son. That, that behind that door is a place of intercession. Boy, I tell you, God, when you get behind those shut doors sometimes, it ain't about you, and my friend, but it's about others. Boy, you can get in there and start praying for somebody else. And you can get in there and praying for needs or the prayer request that you've heard and it's a place you can lift up others before God in that secret place and lay others before the Lord uh, boy I tell you what that's a wonderful thing for me sometimes brother Brian I like to get in there sometimes and, and my friend just start calling names and calling preachers names and people's names and people that's asked me to pray for them and my friend to get in there and start interceding for them and my friend the next thing you know you get a request you get a phone call or you get a text or my friend you see them and they say preacher you you remember what I was asking you about? I said, yeah. I said, well, they said, well, listen, God has took care of it. Uh, and sometimes I have asked, uh, when did he take care of it? Uh, and one time, fellow said, uh, on a certain, certain day, and I got to figuring it up, Brother Christian, I'd not taken no glory for it. Somebody else may have been in the secret place, but as the day I was in the secret place, talking to God, fellowshipping with the Lord, I'm telling you, the secret place is a place you can bring others into and intercede on their behalf. Then I thought about one other uh, that's mentioned in disciples here in John chapter 20. My friend, they, the Bible said that they were shut up. The doors were shut where the disciples assembled for fear of the Jews. Uh, my friend, this one, as Jesus came, they had the doors shut. And if you read that, uh, uh, Brother Jordan, uh, they not only had the doors shut, they had them locked. Yes. Amen. They had them locked. Now, you know, we used to live in a day where you didn't have to lock your doors. Right. Y'all remember that? Some of you young folks don't have no clue. Now you have to sleep with one gun in your hand, a ball bat in the other. Amen. Uh, but that wasn't a you. You just left the doors open. Nobody ever locked their doors when I was a kid. And now you got to lock them. Uh, and my friend, we get to bed sometime. Case they did you lock your door? Did you lock the doors? I say I'm OCD. I checked them five times. They're locked. Amen. Uh, but we're in a day, and they had locked the doors. They had shut themselves up for fear of the Jews. They thought, well, if he crucified them, and we're his disciples, they may come after us. And so they locked them himself up. But guess what? It didn't bother Jesus a bit. He just showed up right in the midst of those locked doors. He manifested himself and made himself known. I don't know about you. I think I could have a spell right here. Sometimes you get that secret play. Man, you're dragging low. And man, my friend, you ain't a shouting too much. And you're a little discouraged. And you get in that secret place. And guess what? God comes, manifests himself and says, peace. I love you. Or whatever he wants to say. Uh, yeah. and he manifests himself uh, and changes our life and pulls us out. Uh, boy, I'm glad that God, hey, you, you, he don't bother to lock doors, he just shows up. Amen. Amen. And then, so I, I thought about this. Uh, it said, when you pray, when you pray, shut yourself up. When you pray, not only shut yourself in, but shut everything out. Right. Amen. Amen. Shut everything else out. Uh, and my friends, seek the Father and, 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 and ask and make directions toward Him. Uh, my friend, that secret place is when you put the world out. 
Amen. <laughs> Push him aside. I was reading a book the other day, and I was telling somebody about it this morning. I read a book the other day, and it talked about this guy was canceling some of his church folks, and a little married couple come in there, and, and he was canceling her, and they were having marriage problems and everything. And the pastor looked at him. He said, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. He said, I'm going to, I'm going to get y'all a motel room for Saturday and Sunday. And said, I want y'all to go. And said, I want you to go and just spend the weekend, uh, those two nights, Saturday, uh, uh, Friday night and Saturday night. Uh, I want you to just stay in that motel and spend some time. Uh, and said, I want you to leave your phone in here with me. And I want you to leave your tablets and your computers in here with me. And we're going to unplug the television when you get there. <laughs> Come on now. It's going to die right here. Amen. And said, so we want no electronics at all. And all electronics that take you some snacks and just stay in there and sit and talk and fellowship and my friend renew who you are uh, to each other and boy they said after after those two nights had come and my friend they went to the pastor and the pastor said hey you have changed our whole life changed our whole marriage uh, you know what they shut all that stuff out hey, it was just him and her uh, and they talked in fellowship one with each other and I'll tell you what ain't it good uh, when you shut the world out uh, and my it's just you and God in there right? my friend and God comes uh, and shows you who he is uh, and you realize what you are right? and how much he loves you you'll come out on the other side thank God renewed and revived uh, just because Jesus manifests himself to us in that secret place amen, amen. <laughs> Boy, I tell you, there's nothing like that secret place, that shut place behind the doors with Jesus. Amen. Sometimes, you know, it's hard for us to do that no more. Amen. Come on. We're miserable. <laughs> now, listen, when you shut the door, I'm going to meddle here. When you shut that door, don't take your phone in there, we. Because <laughs> you can't stand it. <laughs> Lord's about to break through and your phone's going off. You know what you're going to grab? Phone. Yeah. Come on now, help me out, huh? I took my youngins out to eat, all the families out to eat here a while back, and they ain't got over a chip. I took them all in to call them all. I said, okay. I said, Papa's buying. Meet me at a certain time down there. I told him, I said, if you're there at 6 o'clock, I buy. If you're there at 6 05, you buy. Amen. I said, be there at 6 o'clock. reason I say that because there's somebody going to call and try to change it, you know. But anyway, they all met. And I told him, I said, there's one condition tonight when we eat. Nobody brings a phone. Everybody leaves their phone in the car. No phones. Bring your phone in, buy your own supper. Amen. And you say, you tough. Well, I had a reason for it. Got over there, and my friend, nobody had a phone. Nobody could reach outside. There we sat, my friend, at the table. All of us sitting around talking and fellowshipping. But you know what? That was the miserable bunch of kids and, and young as I ever seen in my life. Hey, sometimes, uh, Sister Ned, I see, I watched them. Sometimes they'd do like that to get their phone, and it wasn't there. Uh, and my friend, listen, and, and, and they was a miserable. They couldn't hardly eat. Uh, they didn't know what to talk about. Uh, and my friend, listen, uh, one, of them, one of them said, well, I'll tell you what. If Papa does that again, I ain't a going. I thought cheaper on me, amen. But what I was trying to show them, my friend, it come together as a family and fellowship and leave all that distractions out. I'll tell you, when you get in that secret place, my friend, you cut all the subtractions out, all the things that's going to bother you. Put it outside and just meet with you and God in the midst of that door shut. Just you and meet the Lord. How long has it been since that happened to you? Right. Some of you probably don't even have a special place that you get along with God. Amen. Let me give you about three things and I'll be true. I thought about, I thought about first of all, behind that shut door, there's peace. There's peace behind that shut door. Here they are. Here they are in these verses 19 down through verse 23. My friend, they're there and they're disappointed. They locked themselves up. They're disappointed. They thought Jesus was going to set up the kingdom now. They thought, man, here he is. We're following him. He's going to set up the kingdom, and we're going to be part of it. My friend, the kingdom was not involved. He was going to the cross. He was going to Calvary. And they, my friend, when they realized they had crucified him, they put him in the grave, they thought he was over. Our hope's gone. And they was full of disappointment. Not only that, they was doubting. He said, they, he said, they assembled himself. And my friend, they shut the door. The disciples were assembled because fear of Jews. Yeah. They thought, man, if, he got, if they got him, we're his disciples. We've been following him. 
They know we was there when he done all those miracles. They know we was there when he raised the dead. They know that way we're followers of him. And not only will they destroy him, when they get through him, they're going to come after us. And my friend, they thought, man, this is not good. And they hid themselves and shut themselves up. They was doubting. They, my friend, they was disturbed with the uncertainty. They was uncertain what's going on in their life. Right. They was uncertain. Here they'd been following Jesus all this time. Now they're on their own. <laughs> Come on now, help me out. Huh? It's kind of like when you leave home. When you leave home as a young person. <laughs> no matter how y'all was, I left one time. I made it 24 hours, I was back to the house. <laughs> I walked out, man, I thought, you know, there's fear when you step out where you've always been fed, you've always been clothed, and, and my friend, the mom and daddy took care of everything for you, and you step out on your own. Now, there's a lot of fear, like whether I can make it or not. And my friend, listen, that's the way they were. They was on their own. Gee, they saw him crucified. They saw him buried. They thought, man, it's over with. Our hope was in him. He was going to set up the kingdom. Now we put ourselves in danger for following him. And all of a sudden, Jesus appears and just shows up and the first thing he says peace <laughs> peace be unto you more he's ready to manifested peace in his in that whole situation and you know what the Bible said then they said they was glad when they saw the Lord. Huh? You know what? Uh, Jesus appeared and spoke peace. Uh, my friend, he talked about the peace uh, and ain't you glad sometime God can speak peace of the past. Sometimes when we get in that secret place, we're thinking about things back yonder. <laughs> things that happened back yonder. Things that took place back yonder. And boy, it grips us. And, and I don't care how much God forgives us if you pay. We're just human and we still think about it sometimes. Come on now, help me out. And sometimes some other people can't, can't forget the past. Every time you get around them, they're throwing it back up at you. Amen. Come on now, help me out. Huh? And so, but Jesus, when he said peace, he said, hey, I know what we've been doing in the past, but I just want you to know I'm still here with you. Amen. <laughs> I am the living and resurrected Savior. He said, well, they ought to know that. The other Bible says they didn't know that yet. He did not. In verse uh, chapter 20, verse uh, no, number 9, for as yet they knew not the Scripture that he must rise again from the dead. They didn't realize he was the Savior that's going to resurrect from the dead. And my friend, pay our sin debt. Oh, they seen him as the one that's going to set up the kingdom. But you know what? He went back in the past and he said, hey, just in case you don't realize this, I am the resurrection and the life and peace be unto you. I'm still here. <laughs> Come on now, help me out, huh? Then I thought about that, my friend, the present. My friend, he said, he lets them know, I am here. He said, peace be unto you. And it says it again, and my friend, in verses number 26, to Thomas, peace be unto you. He speaks not only the past and the present, but he also talks about the future. He talks about out yonder another day. And you know what? When he gets in there, he moves all that away and speaks peace. <laughs> Speaks peace to their hearts. You know what John 14 says? Jesus says, my peace. <laughs> my peace I give unto you. <laughs> not just any peace. Not just words of peace. But he said, my peace. <laughs> Amen. Uh, you, you, could take a, you could take a dollar bill. You've probably seen this done before. You can take a dollar bill. And I, in fact, I think I've said this before, but you can take a dollar bill and it, it's worth uh, uh, two halves or four quarters or uh, help me out, 10 dimes, 20 nickels and 100 pennies. That's what that dollar bill is worth in my hand. Right. If I had a dollar I mean, and it's in my hand, that's what it's worth. Right. And I could give it to Brother Brian and I'd say, listen, this is my dollar bill. And I'm giving it to you, Brother Pine. Guess what? When he receives that, guess what? It's still worth, uh, my friend, two halves. It's still worth, uh, my friend, four quarters. It's still worth ten dimes. It don't change its value a bit. And God said, my peace I give unto you. Uh, the same peace that God is. Uh, he said, he is our peace. Uh, and the same peace that God is, uh, it's the same peace uh, that he manifests in our hearts and our lives. Thank God what peace, my friend, we have to overcome the world. Amen. Boy, ain't it good when you get in that secret place? And I don't know what you're in there for, but when you come out, it's like a different world. <laughs> Amen. I mean, listen, I know, I know what that secret place will bring you when it brings peace to your heart. Amen. Amen. And boy, when God just shows up, that's enough peace. 
And then when he does something for you, he answers your prayer. <laughs> you know what's good when he answers your prayer? When you ain't told nobody but him. <laughs> That's when it's good. You didn't, you didn't have faith for us to hit. You know, you didn't have faith in God and come over here and hit everybody. Come on now, help me out. Preachers is really good for that, amen. You know, they got a need and they won't go tell God, but then when they get around you, they're hitting all the time. Come on now, help me out. <laughs> need this, need that, need this, need that. But you know what? It's what's good. It's when you told God, and you know that He's the only one you've told. And the next thing you know, God supplies your needs. Or God speaks to your heart. Or God does something in your life. I'll tell you what you're talking about. Peace. You're talking about joy. And my friend, what a peace that God's made. You don't get that out here in the public sometimes. You don't get out there amongst the crowd. Even Jesus Himself. My friend, He walked away from the disciples. In that garden, He went off father by himself and he said not my will but thy will be done and God came down and spoke peace to his heart and he come back and said hey sleep on if you want to let's go it's things of God I've got to do this he had peace in his heart that it was time to go to Calvary boy ain't it good when you get in that secret place and you're seeking the will of God or you're discouraged or you're defeated and you get in that secret place and God comes down and speaks peace to your heart and lets you know you're right lets you know what he wants lets you know what he's going to do in your heart and your life Bad when you get in that. Hey, sometimes if you don't get in that secret place, you'll miss that. Right. Amen. I'll give you a personal illustration of myself. I got a feller. I had a feller. Don't have him no more. But I had a feller. Didn't like me. Can you imagine that, Mr. Ned? <laughs> Can you imagine that? I mean, he, he didn't. And I honestly, I had no clue, brother Brian. I had no clue. I, know, I didn't know what happened. And I'm talking. I'm not talking about. I'm not talking about uh, just a, a month or two. I'm talking about for several years. Is that right, Mama? Wow. Several, several years. And I, I think, man, I, I tried to call him. Wouldn't answer my phone. Had me blocked. And I thought, man, and I thought. I, I, many times I thought, well, I'm just going to get up and go out there. I'm just going to drive down there uh, to, to see him and see what's going on. And, and you know, and boy, the Holy Ghost wouldn't let me. I'm talking about several years. This went on, this went on, and this went on. And I'm thinking, okay, I have no clue. Sometimes I just let it alone. Sometimes it would bother me and my friend. But you know what? About a month ago, about a month ago, I was in the secret place, Brother Brian, and the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost, that spoke to my heart. And I, and I heard, I heard he was, this guy was in a meeting down a, a few, a, a, about a hundred miles from my house. He was in a meeting, and I'm praying in the secret place. You know what the Holy Ghost said? Holy Ghost said, you go down there and hear that brother preach. <laughs> I'm in my secret place, you know. And nobody else is telling me this. The Holy Ghost has said, you go down there and hear him preach. Right. And I thought, God, that ain't going to be good. <laughs> I thought, that's going to mess the meeting up. <laughs> And the Holy Ghost kept impressing me. I told Kay, I said, I'll be back tonight. That's sometime tonight. And I drove down. I drove down about 100 miles from my house. And I drove down and got off the interstate and went back in there. Finally found that little old church. And my friend, I got out got there about 15 minutes before church started. And, and I walked up to the church. And, and Brother Brian, that preacher was going to preach tonight. He was standing there in the vestibule. And I walked in the vestibule. And I, and, and I looked straight. And he was looking straight at me. And I thought, man, this is my hope. He ain't got a gun. Uh, my friend going to shoot me out all that. You know, I didn't know. And I walked in. You know what I looked at? And you know what? He turned around and looked at me. And immediately, there was Jordan. He started coming that way. And I started making my way. And we met right there in the middle of that vestibule. And I looked up to him and I said, Brother, I said, God told me to come down here and hear you preach tonight. And he said, I'm glad that God told you because I've been wanting you to come. And my friend, listen, we both wanted the same thing. We couldn't wake it out. But you know what? In that secret place, God worked in our heart. And I I looked at him and I said I don't know what happened I don't know what's going on I don't know why you feel like you feel I said I don't know I have no clue but I said if I've done something wrong I'm sorry he looked at me and he said brother Goodson why don't me and you just forget all this and just ease on out of here to glory together and have a good time I said you got it that's all it was said I went up the road howling and shouting and I have myself a time I talked to his daughter later he said she said he come in the door squalling and crying and and said, they said, what happened? You know what? God in the secret place worked it out to bring peace in things that we could not have. Yeah, Boy, when you get in that secret place, God can bring peace and settle peace with things that you couldn't even, nobody else know about. Amen. Then I thought about this. Not only there's peace behind the closed doors, but there's perception behind doors of Jesus. There's uncertainty. When Jesus, they was uncertain. They was disturbed. They was doubting. They didn't know what was going on. 
They know what's going to happen. They didn't know if when they come out of that shut up place what they was going to face and what's going to happen. As far as they know, the soldiers could have been standing up there waiting on them. They had no idea. But you know what? When Jesus came and said, Peace be unto you, that uncertainty, <laughs> that uncertainty turned to gladness. <laughs> when they saw him, they said they was glad. When they saw the Lord. So they saw him, they realized he was the resurrected Savior. <laughs> he ain't over in that grave no more. Amen. <laughs> and my friend, he began, and that uncertainty was cleared up. And my friend, it showed, he showed them their hands and their side. He said, I am the one, I'm the one. They saw them nail the nails in his head. They saw him pierce his side. They saw him put him in that tomb. Brother, they thought he was over with. But I'll tell you what, when he resurrected that morning, and my friend, they were shut up. He went over and revealed himself to them. He said, look at here, look at my hands, look at my side. And they said, that's him, that is him. Thank God he is alive. He is the resurrected Savior. And my friend, perception was brought to clarity. You know, sometimes when you don't know the will of God, you don't know the ways of God, you get in that secret place, God will reveal himself what's going on. Kind of like, kind of like what she just sung. I couldn't hear all that because I can't hear it. But, but I, I picked up enough to know she was talking about, I think I heard enough. Let me be in the will of God. You know, God can use you like that. You know where you find that place? Lord, I don't know what to do. I don't know what I'm going to do in my life. Don't ask nobody. Yeah. They don't know the will of God for your life. Right. Right. I left Gilead Baptist Church before I left Gilead Baptist Church about eight or nine years ago and came here and worked out of the church. The fans of I had a preacher told me, he said, Preacher, God, we was preaching a meeting in his church. He got up the next morning, we was eating breakfast. He said, Brother Mike, God woke me up last night and God told me for you to stay at Gilead and just preach the meetings out from Gilead. I said, That's a funny thing. He ain't told me that. I said, why will you tell you that when it ain't none of your business? Right. Who are you? <laughs> Prophet Bill? <laughs> Come on, Nell. You say, what'd you do? I didn't pay a bit of attention to him. I went home and resigned the church just like God said for me to do. And God's opened the doors and God has blessed it. If I'd have listened to him, I'd have been out of the will of God. Now, you don't have to run around and ask nobody else. You don't have to run around my son no seminar. You don't have to, my friend, grab some book and find the will of God. Just get in that secret place. And if you belong to God, he'll show you what he would have you to do. Hello, young preacher come to my office one, one Sunday night. He said, Brother Gusson, I need to talk to you. I said, okay. He came in and went sat down in the office, sat down. He looked at me. He said, Brother Gusson, he said, God has called me to preach. I said, well, amen. I'll be praying for you. And I just got up and walked out. He told his wife. He told his wife, said, I went and told the preacher God called me to preach. She said, what did he say? He said, he walked out. He come back the next Sunday night. He said, preacher, I need to talk to you. I said, okay. And he got in there. We sat down. Hey, how about that? He said, God I, I, I wants me to preach. Uh, Brother Mike. I said, well, God bless you. And I just tell him, walked out again. Uh, and my friend, the third Sunday night, he comes and said, Brother Mike, I got to talk to you. I said, okay. He said, God called me to preach. Uh, I don't care whether you like it or not. I don't care whether you think so or not. God called me to preach. I said, that's what I was waiting for. I said, if I'd have said anything two weeks ago, I'd have called you to preach. Uh, I said, but God called you to preach. You know where he got that? In that secret place. <laughs> God can give you perception of what you need to do and what you need. And my friend, his presence is there. My friend, peace. And, and my friend, that, that distress is gone. My friend, listen, Thomas, even his verse, Thomas said, I won't believe him. See, he missed that service. If you'll study this, it was on a Sunday. And Thomas missed the Sunday night service. Sometimes that's the worst place you can do. Some of y'all don't know what even y'all, what, what even... Help me out, Mama. Somebody, some of you don't know what you miss when you don't come Sunday night. <laughs> Amen. I was kidding the brother back here. <laughs> we was talking that during the break. He said, you preaching tonight? I said, yeah. And he didn't say nothing. I thought, well, I don't know if that means he's coming back or he just he ain't going to come back, you know. <laughs> I was kidding him while he go, but you know what? He missed that Sunday night service, and guess what? My friend, he missed it, and they said, hey, we've seen the Lord. Oh, you ain't seen the Lord? He's in the grave over there. And ain't no way I believe it if I see, see his hands and, and see his, his feet and see his side. That's the only way I'll, I'll believe it. And boy, they, when they shut themselves back up, guess what? God showed up. Yeah, right. 
Boy, I tell you, I seen this a while ago sitting back there. You know what it says in here? He said, unless I see the nails and uh, the nail prints and had thrust my hand inside, I'll not believe. And after eight days again, the disciples were there and Thomas was with them. Then came Jesus, the doors being shut, and stood in the midst and said, Peace unto you. And immediately he looked at Thomas. <laughs> now he wasn't even there. He said, Thomas, when you said all that over, I heard you. <laughs> I just thought I'd stop back by one more time let you see the gear boy. <laughs> Put your fingers in there if you want to. Here, put your fingers in there if you want to. He didn't even move. He said, my Lord and my God. Right. Uh, that that he, he had a perception of the Lord. Uh, you know what? I, th I thought about in the in the closing verses of chapter number 21 of John. You remember you remember when Peter and, uh, Peter and them went fishing? And the Bible said, Peter said, I go fishing. That other crowd said, I go, well, yeah. And the Bible said they came down and Jesus come walking. And my friend had showed himself on the shore. And the Bible said they didn't know who it was. Peter didn't know who it was. The other disciples didn't know who it was. And all of a sudden, my friend Jesus said, uh, Have you any meat? And they answered him, No. And he said unto them, Cast the net on the right side, and you shall find. And they cast there forward, and now they were, uh, were not able to draw up the multitude of fish. Therefore, that disciple whom Jesus loved said, It's the Lord. <laughs> You say it was because of that great multitude of miracles. See, they taught all night and caught nothing. And all of a sudden, Jesus said, just put your fish, put your nets on the right side. If you know anything about fishing in those days, they fished on the left side. Nobody fished to put nets out on the right side. Jesus said, put it on the right side. <laughs> they put it on the right side. That's a desperate to catch a fish. They put it on the right side. And they pulled up more fish than they could handle. And all of a sudden, John, the disciple of Jesus loved, said, it's the Lord. <laughs> you say where'd that come from you remember he's the one that laid his head on his bosom <laughs> had his head laid on the bosom of the son of God at the supper and my friend Jesus was talking to them and my friend John had his head laid up here can you see it he's got his head laid up here holding old John everybody's just sitting down old John sitting over there with his head on his bosom and Jesus is speaking and over there he's talking about this and talking about that talking about everything and it's rolling right across his ear he, he was so close he was so close in, in, in communion with the Lord he heard that voice and when God spoke that day he knowed it he had a perception. He said, hey, forget about the fish. He's here. <laughs> it's the Lord. You know what? You stay in that secret place long enough, you'll learn his voice. <laughs> hey, Amen. Me and Kate's been married 52 years last, this past Monday. And hey, life at me, but I, I know her walk. I was in the hospital and had heart attack and, and, and she'd come and I could hear her coming down the hall. I tell a little old nurse sitting there with me, I said, it comes my wife. They said, how you know? I said, I said, she's got a clip clock ain't nobody else got. <laughs> sure enough, she'd come walking in. I could hear her voice up the hall sometimes. I'd say, Kay's here. A few times, Brother Tad, will you believe this or not? I just felt it. I thought, Kay's coming. She'd walk in the door. Huh? <laughs> We'd spent so much time together. Right. Amen. Spent so much time together and know her voice. I know her touch. One time we were sitting on the couch and we, we, we sat on the couch sometime the kids over there and, and she, she holds my hand and rubs my hand and everything and one of the grandkids, Riley, she slipped over there and my friend sat down across and reached over there moved Kay's hand and started rubbing my hand like that and immediately I turned around and looked and I said, what are you doing? And she said, they're trying to fool you. I said, I know your touch, I know her touch. I'll tell you what, when you get in that pretty secret place from God, you'll know his voice, you'll know his touch, you'll know when he speaks, thank God. You don't have to look around and see if everybody else is in it thank God you'll be in it because he speaks he speaks that voice Amen. my friend he they gave him perception it's the Lord it's the Lord then only not only is there peace behind the door with Jesus and there's perception but there's a plan behind the doors of Jesus <laughs> look at it the Bible said he said Jesus said in them verse 21 peace be unto you as my father has sent me he even so send I you he said hey I told y'all, I told y'all over in the book of Luke that I'm going over to Calvary and when all this is old, old, over, you go to Jerusalem until you've been tired from on high till you be endued with power from on high and then go in all the world and preach the gospel. Right. What he's saying is, what are you doing shutting up over here? What are you doing? What are you doing over here scared? What are you doing hiding? What are you doing all the doors shut and everything locked? I told you. Go out yonder in all the world. He said, I told you I got a plan. He said, as my father sent me, I'm sending you out into the world. I 
I tell you, you better be careful when you get in that secret place. God may reveal his plans he has for your life. Yep. Amen. Come on now, help me out. Uh, he, in them verses of scripture the commission was revealed as my father sent me and I, I so sent I you God sent Jesus in love for God so loved the world that he sent him down here to die for me and you he said I'm, God sent me out in love I'm sending you out in love <laughs> amen I'm sending you out in labor he said God came and said he, I had to labor I had to go to Calvary and labor I'm sending you out as God sent me to love the world, as God sent me to labor, and my friend touched the world, I'm sending you out with love and labor to love God and love sinners and bring people into the family of God. <laughs> you never know. You never know in that secret place. You may find that very place. You know, over in the book of Joshua, the people of Israel was over here. The walls of Jericho was over here. You know where you find Joshua? Right in the middle. Just him and God. And he's poured himself out to God. Lord, you know these people. And he, I, I believe Joshua just looked at the walls, <laughs> big old jaw, walls of Jericho. And he thought, man, I don't know what we're going to do about this. I don't know how we're going to handle this. And you know what? He got along with God and laid himself before the Lord. God said, take your shoes off. This is holy ground. Oh, yeah. And he got in there with the Lord. And, got, and guess what? God revealed to him yeah. how to tear the walls down and get rid of them. You know what? If you get in there in a secret place a long time, God might just tell you how to deal with that thing that's bothering you. He might tell you how to deal with that thing that's hindering you. You don't have to know, read no book on how to do it. Come on now, help me out. Read the book if you want to. I don't care if you read them or not. Just buy the book. Make them rich. Amen. Amen. But you got the best book. <laughs> Just get in there. You know, I got to quit. But you know what? I thought about this. Miss Annette, if you get, if you get in the, and there's nothing wrong with books, please. I got, I got thousands of books. And, uh, and I'm not against the book, but I got word on how to read much books more. But you know what? If you go in there with a book, if you go in there and say, I'm going to take this book in here, and you go in there and sit down and read that book, you know what you're doing? You're, you're, you're seeing what man said. Yeah. Amen. Amen. <laughs> but if you really want to know him, <laughs> take this book in. Right. <laughs> and if you, if you take another book in there and you get stumped on something, you know what you've got to do? You've got to get out of there and go call that guy or go find that guy and say, what do you mean right here? But when you're saved and the Holy Ghost lives in your heart and you get in that secret place you and the Bible, the Bible said the Holy Ghost will guide you. You don't have to go nowhere. The Holy Ghost will tell you what he said in there. Amen, brother. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I mean, sometimes the best thing you do is get in the secret place, get this Bible and just stay with it. And let God show you his will. Show you the directions of your life. That's what he'll in here. My friend, he showed them the directions of his life. I remember years ago, and I've told this many times, but uh, when you get old, you just say the same thing over and over, so I'm old, amen. But I remember years ago, I was running wide open, wide open. I mean, about like we are now, but I was running wide open. had no, hard, no days off. I'd preach Sunday through Wednesday. Thursday and Friday, I'd be somewhere else. And Saturday, I'd be on the way to pick up another one on Sunday. I'd just run wide open everywhere I'd go. Preachers want fellowship. That's back in the days we played a lot of golf and, and didn't want to play golf during the day. And I was preaching at night and trying to study and do things. And they're just busy, busy, busy. I'd run home, sleep two or three hours, and she'd pack my suitcase and I'd be gone again. And it was just busy. Went on that for months and months and months. And, and never will forget, uh, a guy got me from up in West Virginia. Up in the coal mines of West Virginia, a guy called me. He said, "This is—is is this Mike Goodson?" I said, "Yes, sir." And he said, "Well, he told me who he was, and he passed a little church up there in the coal mines." And he said, "I was down at Sammy Allen's and said I picked the tape up, had your name on it, and said I, I asked Brother Sammy what about this guy." And he said, "You don't go wrong. Listen to him." And so he took the tape home, and he said, "I listened at it." And he said, "God wants you to come up here and preach a meeting for me." And I said, "Well, I, I, if I can work it out." And he told me when he'd like to have me. And I said, I'm booked then. And I said, but I'll try to work something out for you. I said, I'm booked for two years. And I said, I, but I'll try to work it out for you. And he called me. And I hung the phone up. The next morning, a guy called me. And he said, Brother Goodson, he said, uh, I, I'm going to have to cancel our meeting. That, that maybe we can get it a little later. So circumstances, you know. And had good circumstances to do it. And I said, okay. And I looked. It was very, very days that that guy wanted. Wow. In West Virginia, they had called me the day before. And I had a list, but I called. I said, listen, you ain't going to believe this. The very week you want God, uh, this guy's canceled that. I can come. 
Boy went up there and drove in them mountains up there in West Virginia. And y'all know how it is. If you've been up there, some of them places are just like two mountains, you know. You just, you feel like you, you know, what's, what's, what's that word? Claustrophobic, is that it, mama? Uh, you feel like everything's shutting in. That's the way I was driving up through there. I thought, man, I got a partner wood. I found a little old station, and right across the street was a little motel. Had ten rooms in it. They were so little. They were so little, you had to back in the bathroom to sit down. <laughs> I'm telling you, blow old bitty room. And he was like, I thought, my soul. And I, I, and I told the guy, the pastor at night, I went up there and he said, Preacher, he said, I, own, I run on these coal mines and said, I won't be able to see you. I'll just see you at church. And I said, Okay. And, and went down and I said, Where's a good restaurant? <laughs> he said, 40 miles back down the bottom the of the ridge. He said, said, There's a little station across there. And I went over there and I'd get, I'd get packs of crackers and, and, and Pepsis. And I was hung on Pepsis back in those days. And I drank Pepsis and eat packs of crackers. And, and I called home the first night. I called home, sat there, turned the cold in the old phone booth. And I called home. He said, How's it going? I said, Oh, Lord, I don't know what more I'm doing here. I said, There wasn't nobody there. Pastor said he couldn't have nothing to do with me. I'm sitting over in this motel. I said, I Good thing you didn't come. We'd have got a fight. <laughs> Running over each other. I mean, it was bad. And I got in that first night, and boy, I said, God, you know, you ever get there and complaining, telling God stuff? <laughs> I started telling God, I said, God, what, what am I doing here? I got 20 people waiting on the meeting. Got big church and all this. I didn't have to be up here. You know, I just telling God and telling God all this stuff. And, and I told him I was miserable and everything else. And, and it was 40 miles. We had Kmart's back in. It was 40 miles of Kmart. And I thought, my, ain't nothing. I don't know what's going on. And after a while, I shut up. I quit talking. Run out of anything to complain about. And the Holy Ghost said, I got you here. Amen. I said, oh. Holy Ghost said, you're so busy running around with everybody else. You're so busy golfing. And you're so busy running around all these preachers and having breakfast and running around all these meetings and running up and down the road. Said, I ain't had time to talk to you. You ain't stopped long enough. I've been saying nothing to you. I got you up here. I got some things I want to say. <laughs> Went to church and preached on Tuesday night. Dead on the four o'clock. Came back to the motel. Man, it's like heaven. Okay, called me. I called home. She said, how's the meeting going? I said, it's deader than 4 o'clock, but we're having revival at the motel. <laughs> she said, what do you mean? I said, oh, I'm telling you, I go over this dead. When I get back to this motel, I said, God, just like he's sitting here waiting on me to get back. And, and I said, he's a telling me stuff. And I said, I'm a crying. And, uh, and I said, one time I, hey, God got so big, I run out of the motel. I said, God ain't big enough for me and you both in here. And I left out. God came down and revived my soul, revived my ministry, and changed a lot of things in my life. You know why? He pulled me up in that secret place and showed me some plans and showed me some things that he wanted in my life. Some of you got everything in the world going on. You're so miserable. You ain't got time to do nothing. If you just get in that secret place, God would reveal some things he'd have you to do. <laughs> Amen. All right, let me give you one more and I'm through. I've been preaching a long time. It don't matter. You ain't going to order dinner anyway. There's peace behind the door of Jesus. There's perception. There's a plan. But there's power. There's power behind that place. The Bible said, <laughs> and when he had said this, he breathed on them and said, Receive you the Holy Ghost. <laughs> he refreshed them. He breathed on them. Amen. Amen. <laughs> it wouldn't like some of us. We'd breathe on them. We wouldn't be refreshing them. But he breathed on them. And then he, he, he they, they received the power of the Holy Ghost. They come out there different than they went in. They went in discouraged, defeated, despondent, confused. When they come out, they know exactly who God was and what he'd done. They know exactly what he wanted them to do. And they come out with the power to accomplish what he'd have for them to accomplish. They received that power. You know what? I thought about the strength to work was upon them. And the power of God was rest upon them. I think about Peter. You think about Peter over in Luke 22 when Peter denied the Lord. Yeah. Now he denied the Lord. Amen. He cursed. Denied the Lord. But the Bible said he's sitting there and all them mouthy things and all them words he's saying, you know. And all of a sudden Jesus just turns and looks at him. <laughs> Kind of like my daddy. He didn't have to say a word to you. He just look at you. You know, buddy, I've had it when I get home. Pad your britches. Amen. He just looked at him. And the Bible said he went out 
and wept bitterly. You say, where did he go? I believe he went to that special place. How would he, I, I, I believe he went out somewhere by himself and just wept. And wept his way, repented and wept his way back to God. And the next time you see him, you know what he's doing? He's standing on Pentecost. <laughs> With the power of God on him. Preaching that great message at Pentecost. <laughs> I'll tell you what, Baffert, you get that secret place, you come out of there. <laughs> I remember years ago, I was talking about this the other day. Me and Brother Buster Seaton used to preach a lot of meetings together. Buster's in heaven now. But we preached a lot of meetings together. Sometimes we'd have we'd preach as many as 20 meetings together a year. Wow. Most of them would average at least 10 years. And we'd preach together. We'd preach both of us every night. And sometimes I'd preach one night and he'd preach the next night. And they'd just mix it up. We had some of the greatest meetings in the movements of God. And I'm not, I'm not trying to be ugly right here. But back in those days, we didn't get motels. We had to stay at the church. They put us in the basement of the church. On army cots. Many times we'd stay on army cots. Many times, one time in Florida, they put us in the baptistry back here. They had two, two army cots set up back here, and that's where me and him stayed. All week long, we stayed right there on them. And we had to come out like this and go out of the auditorium and go down in the basement, take a shower, and go to the bathroom. And we slept back up here. That's where we slept. Flew to Texas one time. They put us in the sunscreen room on the army cots. Had, had an army cot a piece of the straight chair. That's all we had. Put our stuff down. I ain't complaining. You know what we done all day? We come up here to these altars and pray all day long. God, send the power, send the revival. All day long. I'm talking about all day. Then how do cars? We flew in. <laughs> and we laid in the floors and squalled and cried. Hug each other. Get out and pray together. Cry. Pray God, send the power, send revival. Revival would break out. People would get saved. We go two or three weeks. People get right with God. People get right with each other. You know what the difference was? We locked ourselves up and prayed. And God sent the power. God would say, I mean, those days, some of those days, Brother Phil, it was those days you'd just, you'd just be sitting there in, in the church and the service would be going on. And you'd open your Bible up and you'd just, God just give you a little thought, just yeah. two or three words out of the Bible. And you look at that. And, and I remember one time old Brother Buster said, What are you going to preach tonight? I said, I didn't know it right now. And I said, I, I said I'm going to preach on these three words right here. He said, You're kidding. I said, No, that's all I got. I got up. I, I quoted them three, word, three, three words about three times. And I'm going to tell you, the Holy Ghost fell in that place. I don't know what else I said, but I know one thing. The altar was full. People getting right with God. He said, what the difference was? We got in there and we shut ourselves up and the power of God came. When they walked away from there, they had the power. Sometimes we're looking for everywhere for the answer. Sometimes we're running here and yonder. This ain't going to go over good. Sometimes we're running to every camp meeting trying to find help. All we got to do is get in our back room. Got to go to this seminar and that seminar. Yeah. And the answer is right back there in our closet. Right. That's it. <laughs> I'm not against none of that stuff. How about quit going? Because they're going to preach the same preachers every time they go. And they're going to come there night and preach and go home. <laughs> that went over good. <laughs> Amen. That's the truth. Amen. They don't care what you've got to say. They just got to tell what they got to say and they're yeah. gone. Amen. I remember days when we stayed with each other and cried and prayed, wept before the Lord. I'm going to tell you, let me finish. Singers, I don't care how good a voice you got. I don't care how good a music you got and how good a song you got. If you don't get in that sacred place, get a touch of God. Amen. It ain't going to bless nobody. Amen. Sunday school teachers, I don't care how good a lesson you got. If you don't find that sacred place, get a touch from God. Yeah. Preachers, if you don't get a touch from God. Amen. 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 Whatever you do it, if you don't get a touch. I remember one writer, one writer said, if you're going to preach an hour, you need to spend three hours in prayer if you're going to preach an hour. I thought about that. Read that years and years ago in the book. I thought about that so many times. He said, you need to pray twice as much as you're going to study. Yeah. Sunday school teacher, if you're going to study an hour, you need to pray at least two hours. That's what the, that's what the old writer said. Yeah. I know one thing, it worked back in those days. Yeah. I'm talking about that secret place. Yeah. 
some of your day you've got confusion going on you got burdens you got trials you don't know what to do find your sacred place cast our burdens on the Lord he shall sustain thee you can ask me all the questions you want to and I'll try to get happy any way I can but put the dog same way but we don't have the answer for you God does Amen. Amen. God has the answer for you. You say, where do you find it? In that sacred place. Do you struggle to find good Bible-based resources to supplement your personal devotions? If so, head on over to ibcflorence.com today and click on Bookstore, where we have a ton of resources. And as always, thanks for listening.